What is up you beautiful people? My name is Rito and welcome to another video where I'm going to talk about my new store. Now I've been talking about the new store in the last uh, about 3-4 videos I've actually hinted at it and in fact I shared a Instagram story also on Flying Start Online and if you're not following Flying Start Online go follow Flying Start Online on Insta. So I shared an Insta story there. Uh, it was towards the end of uh, December of 2019 where I wanted to showcase like what amount of profit the new store was able to generate. So we had already crossed 11k in profit and it was pretty insane because the amount of revenue that we had done was just a little over like $35,000 or something. The actual profit uh, margin which, which includes all costs by the way which includes Facebook costs, uh, fulfillment, fees, everything so all of those costs included uh, our profit was still like about 33 percent or so a bit a bit less than 33 percent but it was still pretty awesome uh, and i want to share with you guys in this in this video that how we were able to actually grow this store from basically nothing when we started off in i believe it was june or july of uh, 2019 we didn't pay any attention to this and then about I believe August or September I believe it was September I found this winning product and in that while right from like June July to like September I wasn't really testing enough products I I had this store on the side I tried out a product here and there I tried another product in like a few weeks it was not like that was my main focus but after September once I found that winning product I've actually been consistently spending about five to ten minutes per day at least to like just check the ads whether everything is going fine or not the best thing about this new store and this new product is is it goes to show two things one that drop shipping is not actually dead when i found this winning product i was actually shipping using drop shipping uh, and i uh, was fulfilling using ebay and even aliexpress and there's a second important lesson to be learned that facebook ads is not that competitive also in certain niches so you know these two myths have evolved over time like drop shipping is dead you shouldn't even try drop shipping well that's not true because using drop shipping you can actually find your winning product right and after that you can actually progress over to like fulfilling in bulk from uh, you know china importing to us and fulfilling from us and all of those things and i've actually covered a bit of that in the past also how i how i'm able to achieve that even with this product even though in the beginning i was fulfilling using aliexpress or ebay after about two to three weeks of consistent sales when i knew that all right this product is selling and that too pretty profitably i started importing from china and i did not need you know uh, to talk to a lot of different suppliers I hardly talked to like four or five different suppliers finalized one of them and then uh, they have been fulfilling the products for me and you know it was not like this supplier in china asked me to buy like thousands of units in order to work with them no it was hardly like a hundred or two hundred units and that was all i needed and they started shipping to the us warehouse here and then the us warehouse started shipping to my customers so it became like a pretty seamless experience and because i've done that in the past it didn't take me much time to follow through with this new store and the second important thing that i want to teach you guys in this is that facebook ads is actually not that competitive if you know what you're doing of course if you have not found your winning product if if the product doesn't resonate your store brand or the store colors or or whatever the store does not resonate with the product you're selling you might not get enough sales if you're in that stage where you're still testing products on your store you haven't found a winner yet look back at your previous uh, data let's say you've tested 20 products so far look back at those 20 products that you advertise and check which of the products got you sales number one all right so let's say you've got four products that have gotten you sales now try to find out a trend among the most profitable products maybe it was profitable for a few days but then it fell off the wagon or something but look at the trend right you might be able to figure out like this type of product or this this niche of product is selling well on my store and this is one important point i want you to take away from this when you're testing don't just blindly test let's say you don't want to test all sorts of different niches initially let's say you haven't got you're, you're not getting sales and you haven't cracked the code yet it's fine you're testing all sorts of different products but once you find you know uh, a few different type of uh, products that have sold well on your store try to find a link between them what niche are, are these related to and then in the future only test products from that niche all right this is very important so when you do that you're actually reducing the chances of failure and, and going forward you probably will be able to find a winning product much quicker. So I had found like two small winners earlier and both of them were in a particular niche in this new store and the new products that I was testing was in that particular niche after about eight products overall that I tested I found this winning product and on the basis of that I've been able to scale this to new heights. Now 
few lessons I want you guys to take away from this is that uh, I've been able to attain return on ad spends of over 4.5 and not with like, of course, I'm not spending thousands of dollars per day. I don't intend to spend thousands of dollars per day because I know that this product is not something that is mass market appeal, right? It is a product that is going to appeal to a few niche customers at a time. So. I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars per day, but I'm going to spend a few hundred dollars per day. And that's what I've been doing for the past like two months or so now. And it gives me a healthy profit margin with a great return on ad spend. And I am able to run this business with very, very less time consumption on my own part. So it's pretty much like an automated business right now. And I know I just have to place an order with a supplier when we are running out of inventory. I just have to look at my ads five, 10 minutes per day. Most of the days, there's nothing much to look at because you know, it has spent a few hundred dollars. It has made a few hundred dollars or thousand, two thousand dollars. And that's pretty much it. I just know my numbers now. Now, a few important things that has led me to reach this stage. Number one is I followed the tuber method properly. Tuber accounts for all of the expenses that happen in your business, which includes, let's say, currency conversion cost, equalization levy, uh, GST, your um, ad cost, of course, your product fulfillment cost, your taxes, if any. So it includes all of the costs and your uh, payment gateway fees, of course. So it, it includes every single thing. And then based off of that, the Tuber comes out to be 1.8, all right? You know for a fact that if your return on ad spend on Facebook comes out to let's say 1.85 or 1.9 you're still profitable you're not you're not that much profitable but you're still profitable with this product also i had of course done all my calculations and you can actually download the tuber sheet um, uh, we can add the link below in the video also so download the tuber sheet do these calculations and figure out your tuber because when you do that you really start to know your numbers and you start to find out leakages in your business what you can correct and what not so last few months i've been actually optimizing i i figured out i'm, I'm spending a little bit more money on on the supplier front so let's try to get that down i was spending a little bit more money on custom so let's try and try and get that down now i haven't really been scaling to the moon because i know this is like a product that does not have such a big audience and of course it depends product to product but it's good money man i mean it's something that i don't spend much time on and i'm able to just you know spend a few minutes per day because the business is not optimized the ad account just keeps spending money sales keep on coming it's just sweet, sweet business. Like this is how business is supposed to be, right? A passive income business. This is how it's supposed to be. You, you put in some hard work in the initial days, you set everything up and then it's all, of course, all rainbows and roses. But I know for a fact, like let's say a few months down the line, maybe there is some turbulence, maybe some issue happens. So I have to probably solve that issue. And an important point I want to tell you guys about is finding the sweet spot of profitability. E-commerce is of course a cash flow business, all right? If you know your cash flow, if you're able to handle what amount of money is coming, when it is it coming and when you're spending your money how much you're spending so once you know your numbers you can find a sweet spot of profitability now for a few days i actually tried spending say 400 or 500 dollars per day on my ad spend but i realized like uh, even though it was still profitable but i was actually making in amount more profit when i was spending say 250 or 300 dollars per day on my facebook ad account so I found the sweet spot right there. I was spending initially like about $100 a day, then I moved to 200, then 400 also, and then 500 also. But then I realized, or for me, the sweet spot lies between like 250 to $300 per day of ad spend. So that is the sweet spot that you guys have to find in your business. Now, every store, every product is going to be different. Some are like mass market products where you can spend even thousands of dollars every day and still be like in good profit. And it of course depends on time of the year also, if people are in buying mode or not, a lot of different factors. But but figure these things out. Find the sweet spot in your business and then you're able to sell more comfortably. I won't say scale because now you've found your sweet spot. So it's still a place where you're at, where you're comfortable, where you know you're going to be in profit every single day without much pressure. And it's going to be good money coming into your bank account net. And so that your cash flow is never affected, your cash flow keeps on keeps going on. So these are just a few important points I want to tell you about this new store. I want to talk to you guys about like a four stage blueprint of, of moving on from drop shipping over to like full like branded products and you know importing from China and whatnot. So I want to go into all of that detail. I'll be making a, a video in the future uh, regarding this topic. I, I spoke about this particular uh, strategy, the four stage blueprint in my uh, Bombay event that I spoke at a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and it was pretty awesome people loved it. I know it's been a while. So I want to wish you guys a happy new year. 2020 
rock it own it it's going to be awesome all the best with your progress all the best with your e-commerce journey i'll see you in the next video okay tata bye bye